Trader Joe's again, huh? They really have quite the selection. Plus, it helps that that last video you did has more views than anything else you've ever done. Uh, uh, maybe... You are nothing but a pawn to your YouTube overlords. Shh, they might hear you. Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, as much as I love warm weather, there is nothing I love more than cracking open a bottle of red wine once the weather turns cool. So I'm super excited to get into these. Um, but before we get there, um, if you've been to the channel before or this is your first time, I hope you'll take a moment to give me a subscribe or like. Um, really helps me to know whether I'm doing a good job or not. All right, let's get into it. So the last time we visited that trader named Joe, we tasted their Cabernet Sauvignon, um, a, a Meritage Red Blend, uh, and a Zinfandel. If you haven't seen that video for one reason or another, link will be up here, I think. Uh, so give that a watch. This week we're looking at three more reds, a, a Pinot Noir, a Merlot, and a Syrah. Pinot Noir. This is a reserve 2021 Pinot Noir from Santa Barbara County in California, uh, lot number 241. Uh, the description on the bottle uh, is, is always interesting in these, now that we've kind of gotten into a few of them. Uh, notes of Bing cherry, cranberry, toasted oak, balanced with bright acidity and silky soft finish. Produced and bottled by Bazano uh, and Company, Morgan Hills, California. Uh, this is 14.7% alcohol by volume and a whopping $9.99 at Trader Joe's. So it's interesting. This one's got like, it, it's got a rich red, uh, but also like a garnet uh, type of that dark, that darker red color to it, which is nice. Not much uh, on the nose, at least from this distance, um, not getting too much from it. Um, what are we looking for? Notes of Bing Cherry. So ripe fruit right off the bat, like fairly, fairly strong cherry, cranberry flavor smells, flavor. I'm, I'm tasting with my nose. That's, that's what aroma is, right? It's the tongues of the nostril. That's, that's a disturbing thought. Toasted oak. Sure, toasted oak. Let's give it a try. Woo, all right. Long time no red, right? I feel like I've been drinking whites all summer. Not used to tannins or anything else <laughs> involving a red. Bright, could use a minute or two to probably settle down. The tannins aren't too strong. It's, again, it's my palate, you know, probably haven't really had a good red since I tried those back in, you know, July. You know, it's just that time of year where I don't drink a whole lot of reds. That being said, this is nice. Uh, sometimes you run into Pinot Noirs that are really heavy, super sweet, like lots of body, um, lots of forward fruit. Um, this is nice. It's got some nice balance. Not super heavy, not, a, not full bodied, moderate body, moderate tannins. Um, I'd actually say more on, uh, you know, it says bright acidity, definitely. Uh, mouth's watering quite a bit. Um, not over the top though, a, not an overly complicated wine, um, a nice red, especially at this price point, great value. Um, again, good, uh, this would be great with a steak, um, you know, fatty, fatty foods, um, you know, something that's got a little bit of something to it, like, you know, robust, a robust meal, stews. Um, this is nice, uh, a really nice option. And, and once again, Trader Joe's is showing up um, with a very drinkable Pinot Noir that isn't leaning too much into necessarily what may be perceived as uh, the, the bet, like the favored characteristics. Um, don't film with cats. Merlot. 
Next is a Grand Reserve 2021 Merlot uh, from Santa Inez Valley, uh, Santa Barbara, California, uh, as again, uh, lot number 123. Uh, bottle description as follows. Notes of ripe dark plum and cherry combine with the palette of raspberry, cocoa, and spice for a pleasantly long finish. <clears throat> Cellared and bottled by Behind the Scene Wine Company, Napa, California. 14.5% uh, alcohol by volume, so a little bit less. Um, and this is the Grand Reserve, so, you know, generally speaking, the, the, um, Pricing the pricing at Trader Joe's is the same. Grand Reserve is twelve ninety nine. Reserve is nine ninety nine. Not always a, a big fan of Merlot, um, mainly because it's a very can be very fruit forward. Um, a lot of like kind of very heavy fruit uh, on the nose and on the palate. Um, so not always something, and that it probably depends on the Merlot, but um, that's just not normally something that I. I particularly enjoy. Ooh, okay, so much uh, deeper, darker red here. Um, very different from our Pinot Noir, which it should be. Like the black raspberry color. Getting a little bit um, off the nose at this distance. A little bit more, for, like, like I said, you know, my expectations of it is, is to be fruit forward. And it, and it seems like it's a little bit more powerful than that Pinot Noir, which is, it's good. A Pinot Noir shouldn't be that heavy fruit forward. So definitely those dark fruits, I'm getting like that plum, uh, you know, that dark ripe plum um, and cherry notes, uh, dark fruit, like it, you know, kind of reads into the, into the visuals. Um, and let's see if the, the palette of raspberry, cocoa and spice lives up to the description. Okay, getting the spice. <laughs> um, heavier on the tannins, dry, um, sucking the moisture out, high, uh, higher acidity, I think, than, than the Pinot Noir. Man, I got dogs barking, I got cats playing. It's a friggin' menagerie around here. Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. I'm getting the raspberry, the cocoa's a bit of a stretch. I think, N n no. Cats. What they say, don't film with animals and kids. Gotcha. Um, not getting the cocoa. Um, maybe it's just me. Um, pleasant. Um, pushing this to probably a little bit of a wine fool level two. Um, just because it's a little bit more, more complicated, it's not a, I wouldn't, uh, consider this an easy drinker. Um, I think that first bottle of the Pinot Noir, I don't think I gave it a wine level now that I'm thinking about it. I think I got distracted. Um, that's a wine level one, wine full level one. Um, that's an easy, easy drinker, uh, you know, easy to get into. Um, I think this, this pushes into a little bit more two, two level, just because it's a little bit more complicated, um, higher tannin levels, uh, I know can scare some people off. Um, so, um, Again, a little bit more interesting. Still a California Merlot. Um, you know, we're not talking super fancy. I think just, uh, you know, depending on your palate, um, this might be more adventurous for some than others. Syrah. Lastly, we have a Reserve 2021 Syrah Waluke Slope. Uh, I'm gonna hope that I pronounced that right. Uh, lot 237. Uh, per the description, uh, complex and smooth, layers of dark berry notes framed with silky tannins. Going to be honest, it's written in script and my old eyes, when I first read it, I thought it said silly, silly tannins. Made with organically grown berries, made with organically grown, grown grapes, berries. Suddenly we're making wine out of berries now. Dude. They're just a different type of berry. Anyway, uh, vinted and bottled by DNA Vineyards, Ukiah, California. Uh, certified organic. 
uh, and 13.9% alcohol by volume. So of the three that we've tried, this is the lowest alcohol content. Um, pretty bright off the nose. Um, and for those who are kind of maybe questioning, you know, if you're new to drinking wine, Syrah, maybe you've heard of Shiraz. Uh, that's the Australian uh, version I, that's that's what they call it down there when when the same grape is grown in australia they call it shiraz cherries cranberry blackberry kind of all wrapped up into one let's give it a try smooth dry dry without heavy tannins um you know getting that uh mouth drying effect um without really like like i said the, the tannins aren't super heavy um so it's an interesting mixture i'm um, gonna be honest this one's a little lacking to me um not a whole lot on the flavor profile um it's kind of leaving me feeling a little thin uh the body like not enough body um not really getting enough um not getting enough flavor out of it uh and you know that's half the reason why you drink wine um interesting you know notes on the nose uh good color um dry um but kind of lacking in substance um kind of hard to put my finger on it but uh too much you know too high on the alcohol level and Nothing to back it up. Um, it kind of feels, uh, I don't know. It's just not, not, not hitting it for me. Yeah, even at 9.99, uh, you can probably find a really nice Australian Shiraz um, in that 10 to $15 range um, that'll really kind of blow this away. Um, it is what it is. Uh, wine full level one uh, and probably not worth your time honestly um you might not enjoy this uh I, it might not even be worth a rating but um a nice try it feels like it tried <laughs> which is kind of the worst thing to say about it but um it feels like a nice try and and maybe it was just the year um maybe next year. Well, that does it for this week. Uh, I appreciate you joining me. Um, I had a lot of visitors come through from that first uh, Trader Joe's video, uh, so it garnered a lot of interest. Uh, let me know if you're, you know, if you're a regular Trader Joe's, uh, you know, visitor uh, buying their wine. Is there one that you like in particular? Um, have you tried all of them um you know what what's really stood out for you would love to have that conversation until next time stay foolish and cheers to drinking better wine not this wine though <clears throat>